logistics and in transport energy. Um, in recent times, Connor was Connor has been requested by the UK government environmental agency to train ESOS lead assessors in transport energy auditing. And I know there's a lot of people in the room already know Connor, but um, I'm going to hand you over to him for the day. And if we can help at all throughout the day, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Ronan. Um, so, good morning, folks. Um, delighted to be back here today um, in Crow Park. It's, um, believe it or not, the fourth um, Future in Pharmaceuticals um, event. Um, but I think the landscape has changed considerably um, in the last 12 months. Um, we had a very successful COP21 event in Paris, which I think for all of you who are working in sustainability and energy management was, was good news. We had a lot of governments sign up to um, sustainability goals, and I think what was important about it was that they were their own goals. They set their own targets, and that's what they signed up to. So that, that was good news. Um, having said that, pharmaceuticals is a very um, investment, capital, in capital intensive sector, and um, I'm looking forward today to seeing the uh, challenges and how um, companies are overcoming the investment challenges um, as a result of the historically low um, oil prices. And I think we've got some great speakers and some great case studies in, in how to overcome both the uh, financial and people challenges of energy management. Um, so today we have a hopefully an engaging debate and some engaging speakers and I'm looking forward to your questions. You have the chat role which, which Ronan spoke to you about. Um, the hashtag is Future in Pharma for those of you who are on Twitter. Um, as Ronan has said, we'd like you to put your phones on silent if you could. Um, looking forward really to, you know, it, because of the election it's, it's kind of a politician free day but uh, hopefully based on the, uh, the debate last night it'll be a creek free event as well. And uh, I'm going to hand you over now to um, Eugene McCauley and uh, he's going to chat about um, the new market arrangements um, for electricity across Europe and that's due to go live in October 2017. So I'll just hand you over now to Eugene. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning everybody. Uh, so I suppose just to start to welcome you on behalf of Electric Ireland. And just to put the plug in, there's a stand just outside the door there if you want to go and visit them, and a stand down the back of the room, and they have uh, an interesting offering around sort of solar PV. So if you want to talk to them about that, feel free. Um, just about what I want to talk to you about now, um, there's a current wholesale electricity market in, on, on the island of Ireland. It's called the single electricity market. And that is due to change fundamentally. Uh, in October 2017 into what they're calling the integrated single electricity market. So my role in ESB is to manage the, the change on, on, on behalf of ESB. My background has been, well I was here last year speaking around sort of market trends, around fuels and that. So my background has been either modelling the market or in market design. So hopefully I'll give you some flavour of what's going to happen over the next 20 minutes or so and to actually uh, give you some ideas of how it might be beneficial or not uh, to large customers such as yourselves. So why are we doing this, I suppose, is the, is the first question. We have a market at the moment that's running quite well, uh, but I suppose the main reason we're doing this is because we have to. European legislation has changed and because of those changes we have to change our market. There's three key reasons that we're changing. One is they talk about the third energy package, it's, it's EU's speak. They want to have a single wholesale electricity price for electricity across all of Europe. That's the goal. So if you're buying power in Germany or Spain or Ireland that you'd be paying the same wholesale price. Now they're not quite going to get there at this stage because we haven't got enough interconnection between all those areas for that to happen. But what we will have is we'll have a single uh, market throughout all of Europe. So for the energy side there'll be a single market throughout all of Europe. Now for some countries like GB it means very small changes to their market but for Ireland it means a very big change to our energy market and I'll come to that later on. 
Just on the last part of the slide then, the state aid rules are also changing. We have a capacity market in Ireland, so any power station that is there, whether it runs or not, it gets paid for being available. And also for large customers, uh, demand side units, you, get a, you, can, you can earn a capacity payment. That capacity payment is fundamentally changing as well because it doesn't comply with the new EU legislation around state aid rules. And last but not least is the renewables obligation. Um, by 2020, Ireland uh, will have 40%, on average 40% of its demand, being met from renewable sources. For renewable sources in Ireland, 90% of that or 95% of that will be wind. And having wind, that amount of wind on your system is going to give you very significant issues on the system. So we do need to change the rules about how we put in what they're calling uh, DS3. It's, what's, it's, it's ancillary services. So DS3 stands for delivering a secure, sustainable electricity system. And to do that, we need new services to make sure that when the wind is there, if something else happens on the system, there won't be blackouts. I'll get into more detail on all these as we go on. So just looking at the impact of wind, uh, this graph might be quite hard to see from those of you at the back, and I'll turn to, to point out at the moment, but it, it's seven days of a week. So it starts on a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is the way the graph works. And it's really the Friday, which happens to be the 1st of January, is an interesting day. And you can see on the graph the amount of wind that is being produced through the full day of the 1st of January. There was quite a large volume of wind being produced, and as a result, very little conventional plant ran. So very few CCGTs ran. And if you take sort of three days later on the Monday, when the wind had dropped off, you can see that a lot more of the CCGTs have to run. So we're seeing now that wind is having a bigger and bigger influence. In fact, for two weeks in the middle of January, wind hit the 40% target. Two weeks in the middle of the, the, the month of the year that we have the highest electricity demand, the, the, the demand, 40% of the demand was, was, was being met by wind. So wind is having a, a larger and a bigger impact on, on our system. And that's having a knock-on impact on prices, a knock-on impact on other plants running, and will have impacts on the interconnector and how they flow as well. So just moving on to what will change. Um, the three parts of the energy margin, if you like, are the, the money in the market at the moment. There's energy payments, there's capacity payments, and there's ancillary services payments. The capacity payments, we believe, will reduce quite considerably in the new market, and I'll go into details behind that in a minute. The ancillary services payments will increase quite significantly, and there's, 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 there's opportunities here for large customers to get some of that. Uh, part of that uh, ancillary services payment as well. They're currently about 60 million by 2020, 2021. They'll go up to about two, 240 million. So there's a significant amount of money there. And on the energy side, there's, we don't know yet as to what will happen with the energy payments. We don't know whether the energy payments will get bigger or get smaller. And we don't know overall whether the full cake, if you like, the full amount of money in the market will increase or decrease. So I'll go into each of the three markets now in slightly more detail because I, I think there's some interesting parts to this. So energy is really the money that you receive from buying and selling electricity in the market. So very much that. Capacity is money you earn for being available. A generator earns it for being available whether they run or not. And also DSU, demand side units, also earn it when they're available. And ancillary services are all those other bits and pieces of things like spinning reserve, voltage control, and all of those things that are needed to keep the system alive and to keep the system functioning. And, uh, so, uh, and again, which either generators or large customers can also supply those. So what's going to change? 
the energy markets today, and I think that this is this is a very big fundamental change and an opportunity. I think in the energy markets today, generators all bid in on a day ahead basis. They look at their fuel costs. They're actually regulated in their bids. They look at their fuel costs on a day ahead basis and say the cost for me to start tomorrow is X. It's going to cost me Y to run per hour and a little bit more to produce each megawatt. And they send that information into National Grid. National Grid then dispatch the generators on the day. Four days after the event, they then have all the meter data in and they say, well, this is what the generators actually ran, this is what they should have ran, this is what customers take, and here is a price for electricity on the day. Now, because it's four days after the event is one of the reasons that, that, that this market has to change. To get efficient interconnector flows, you need to know the price of electricity in any half hour during that half hour. Finding out four days later that the price of electricity was high or low in a given half hour when the price in GB was set you know, doesn't, doesn't help. So one of the main reasons that the energy market is changing is because it's, it's what they call an ex-post market now, and it's four days afterwards. So that's a, that's a fundamental change. The other change which I think is going to impact large customers is the fact that at the moment suppliers just take demand. They don't have to forecast demand. And if they do forecast their demand and they get it wrong, it doesn't matter. They pay the same price for demand that they didn't forecast as demand that they did forecast, but that will fundamentally change. So moving on to the new market, um, there's going to be a lot of different prices for electricity in the new market. Instead of just one price, really, that everybody pays, there's going to be three or four key prices in the market. The first market that suppliers see is what they call the day ahead market. This market runs throughout all of Europe. So every single interconnector in Europe is dispatched based on prices in this market. Now Ireland and Spain to, to, to some extent have implemented this market for all of the dispatch. So if you're a supplier or you're a customer now, you're going to have to forecast your demand at a day ahead stage. And, you can, and you'll buy that electricity at the day ahead price. Now that day ahead price market is it's similar to the current market in that it's a pool market. So everybody pays the same price for electricity and everybody gets the same price for electricity. But that's the day ahead market, that's a European market and you'll be held to whatever volume you said you'll take at the day ahead stage, you'll pay the day ahead price for. Even if you take a different volume, you'll pay a different price for that volume. The second market is the intraday market. The intraday market is again a European wide market. So you could again be buying from Germany or buying from whoever. Um, and this market allows you to bilaterally trade. So if you discover during the day that you have a power station and that power station is no longer available, that, and, and you've sold something in the day ahead market, you can buy some more. You can buy the power to, recover, to, to cover for that in, in, in the intraday market. Or if your demand has gone up, you can buy the market to cover You can buy the power to cover for that. Equally, if the wind isn't blowing and the wind was projected to blow, you can buy. Or if the wind is blowing even more, you can sell. Now, that's a bilateral market. So that's two people over some sort of exchange on a screen going, well, I'll sell if the price is 30 euros, or well, I'll buy if the price is 31, and they, 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 they figure out how to do the deal. The last market then, really, of, well, there's two markets, but they both come out at the same price, the balancing market and the imbalance market. Uh, they are very much after the other markets close, so within the last hour, be up, up to real time. There is another market then, so that if, if your power station suddenly trips, so you're halfway through an hour and, and your power station suddenly trips and isn't producing anything more, the system operator has to be able to balance the system in, in real time, and they use the balancing price. Now, the, if the, the balancing price should be the most volatile of the prices. So if, if the day ahead price should probably if things work out the way they, they, they think it will, be a fairly flat, not very, not very um, uh, volatile price. The intraday market then will be more volatile, but it'll be single trades between various people. But the, but the balancing market could be a very volatile price. And in the balancing market, every generator 
and every supplier must put in bids to say, well, if you need more power from me, you can buy the extra power at this price. If you need less power, you can buy the power at that price. This market is just for the island of Ireland. The interconnectors don't take part in this market. And this market, it looks like it's going to be regulated. Now, the, the, all of the current market is regulated to so what they call short run marginal costs, so you have to bid in your fuel costs. The day ahead market, the intraday market, will probably not be regulated to short run marginal costs, so they could go up or down above those levels. But the balancing market will probably be regulated to short run marginal cost. But on top of that short run marginal cost, what they're adding in is they're adding in what they're calling administered scarcity pricing which means that at that stage, if close to real time, there's not quite enough or there's just about enough uh, generation to meet demand, they'll start upping the price of generation above the short run marginal cost. And they can spike the price in that market. The current number that they're talking about is up to 11,000 euros a megawatt hour. So that can be a very volatile market and it can be a place where people don't want to be. So today, you just take your electricity, a supplier takes their electricity, and they all pay the same price. In the new market, you know, if you can forecast your electricity better, you can get it at a day ahead price. If, some, if you have to tune within day, you'll be getting the within day price, and that depends what somebody is willing to sell to you at. And if you don't do it that way and you wait for the balance in price and something happens in real time, you could be paying an even more volatile price. Like that price can go up to the 11,000, but it can also go down to less than zero. So very different uh, for generators, very different for suppliers, and very different sort of risk, I think, that, that suppliers and, and large customers are now facing. But I do think there's an opportunity there that if a large customer can forecast their demand and are relatively steady on their demand, that you know, there's a discussion there between you and your supplier about how much risk is that supplier actually facing. And the next market then that is changing, and, and, and again, I think there's, there's risks and opportunities for, for, for people in this, is the supplier, is, is the capacity payment. The current capacity payment is anybody who turns up gets a capacity payment. They have this lovely big pot of money, 500, 500 odd million, it's slightly less this year, but about 500 million for off capacity payments. And any generator who's, who's available gets paid it. And any, um, any demand side unit can get that capacity payment as well. That was put in back in 2005 and six when there, was, there, there wasn't enough capacity on the island. And that was put in to try and get people to build power stations. It's worked very well. In fact, it's worked too well. We, you know, in, in 2009, demand fell by 9%. It continued to fall in 10, 11, 12, and 13, and 14. Yet last year we saw a small 2% growth, but we have loads of power stations that aren't running at the moment. So what's going to happen is there's going to be a competition now. There's going to be an auction. And only the cheapest number of power stations will actually win a capacity contract. The other power stations won't. And I think for demand side units, they'll have to partake in that auction as well. It won't be just turn up and get some money. There'll be an auction. Um, now, as a part of winning that auction, you take on an obligation. And the obligation you take on is to say, well, if in any half hour the price in the market goes above a certain level, say 300 euros a megawatt hour, I'll pay back the difference between the actual price in the market and the 300. So that puts an emphasis on generators to be available and to be running at times a very high price. So it's fundamentally different capacity payment. It's a lot more risky for generators. It's a lot more risky for demand side units as well, because you, you don't want to be taking demand at a time the prices go high in the market. So we have to manage that. There's also, I suppose, on the other side, how they're going to charge it to suppliers is changing. And that's what the graph behind me shows. The blue line is really how suppliers are currently charged for capacity. You're charged for capacity based on the average demand on the system. Um, which means that 
yes, you pay slightly more over peak, but only slightly more over peak. And what they're, what's, what's going to be happening in, I, in, in ISEM is they're only going to be charging it over the peak at winter and over the daytime and summer. So that's the orange graph. So if you can reduce your demand over the peak times in winter, there's a potentially sort of significant saving on capacity payments to be had out of ISEM. So moving on to uh, ancillary services. This is, again, I think an opportunity because if you look at sort of the electricity system in Ireland 10 years ago, there was very little wind and there was loads of big lumps of metal spinning at 3,000 revs per second. And if one of them tripped, there was about 10 or 15 other ones there to pick up the problem. And they were all synchronised to the system, so they automatically picked up what picked up the, 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 the load and kept the frequency of the system as it should be. What we're seeing now is that in any given half hour now, we'll have 75% of the demand being met by wind. Wind doesn't help in those circumstances. So, if there's, so now there's only 25% of the demand that are there to help if a unit trips. A unit could be 5% of that. You could have five units running on the island, and if one of them trip, the other four must be able to help very, very quickly. So we need new ancillary services. We need better ancillary services. We're going from about six at the moment, which they pay about 55 million a year for, to 13 or 14 that they're going to be paying 235 million a year for. So I think there's an opportunity here as well, because there's two options to do. There's two options you can do when some the when, if if a conventional generator trips and you lose 300 megawatts, you can either up 300 megawatts in generation or you can drop 300 megawatts in demand. So there's an opportunity, I think, for large customers if they are prepared and if they are willing to drop their demand very quickly to make a, to, to, to make money out of doing that. Uh, again, just for the details of this. It, there'll be, this is actually be starting to go live in October this year rather than October next year. Not all these products will be available. There will be tariffs for the first year, and after that they will be gradually moving towards auctions for them. Um, I suppose overall in the market, the big question will mean, will there be more money in the market or less money in the market? It's a bit too early yet. We're only in sort of defining the rules phase of this. Even though the market's going live in less than 18 months' time, we're still defining the rules. There might be a little bit more or a little bit less money. In general, what you'll see is that the price of electricity comes from the price of commodities. And if gas prices are low, electricity prices should be following them down. And if gas prices are high, electricity prices will be following it up. So what impact will it have on prices and what impact will it have on customers? Um, you will see that, if, you're, that if, you can, if you can forecast your demand, you might see a less volatile price, you might see an average a, a slightly lower price. If you can't do that, then you might see higher and more volatile prices. ISEM is not going to be cheap to implement across the market, and all suppliers and all generators are probably going to try and recover some of that. Wind is trying to get its own set of rules in ISEM, and if they do, it might mean a higher PSO levy. It's not, it's not sure yet. But we should see more increased competition. We should see, now already we've two of the big six from GB uh, competing, SSE and uh, Centrica actively competing in Ireland. We, th this should hopefully drive prices between GB and Ireland closer and might actually bring in more competition, which would be good for markets. The capacity market, because it's not just a lump of 500 million being passed out to whoever turns up, it should be a lower pot of money that's being spent, which should be better, and we should see some power stations. There's power stations running, or yes, they are running. There's power stations running in Ireland that were commissioned in the 1960s. You know, it's about time they closed. Uh, and it should, the optimum flow across the interconnectors should tend to reduce the price in Ireland. So how will it affect customers in uh, non-price ways? Well, I do think certainly for the INC customers, the 
demand side units will become uh, a lot more. There'll be a lot more opp opportunities there. You know, there will be a risk in being a demand side unit, which is probably not there at the moment. But I think there's an opportunity to make money, uh, and I do think that you know it's going to be. I think there will probably be a need to talk more to your supplier more frequently, certainly for the big for, for the big for the big users, because I think then they'll be more able to, act, to actively manage their demand and therefore their risk and therefore your risk. Thank you.